I think it's time just to, to liven things up a little bit, sure. see how much energy there is in the room. So just hands up if you think solar power is amazing and awesome. All right, keep your hands up if you think community scale wind farms, good idea. Okay, keep your hands up if you think coal is a good idea. There we go. So, our society, we're currently grappling with a choice. Um, do we want more coal power? You know, CSG, coal seam gas, gas generation? Or do we want to move towards clean, renewable energy sources, such as solar power? You know, the solar panels we see popping up on neighbourhood roofs. Um, new types of solar, such as concentrating solar power that we see working day and night in the United States, and also wind farms, um, especially community scale wind farms. Um, you know, they are already powering towns around Victoria. So, in terms of this choice between pollution and fossil fuels and clean renewables, Taking a look around the state of Victoria, we can see that communities are making the choice. Um, Hepburn, Hepburn Springs and uh, Dalesford, 2,000 community members have pulled their resources together. They've chipped in and they've built a two turbine community owned wind farm. So these two turbines produce enough clean renewable electricity to meet the energy needs of those two towns over a year. So just one community that has made this choice. 40 kilometres down the road in Woodend, there's a community that have just built their, their first um, community-owned solar installation and the revenue from that project is going to be flowing in and um, supporting the construction of another community wind farm, a three turbine farm that will power five towns in the region. Um, in the state's north, in Yakandanda, has anyone heard of Yakandanda? Yeah! Good old Yak, it's awesome up there. So, at, at the national level, we've heard a lot about the renewable energy target, the so-called RET. Well, Yakandanda, they've set a YRET, the Yakandanda Renewable Energy Target, <laughs> and they're aiming for 100% renewables by 2021. So, even more ambitious yeah. than any government in this country. Um, you know, this is kind of starting off a bit of a community competition. We've got Newstead um, in the gold fields. Um, they've also set a target of 100% renewable energy, um, but they're they're trying to beat a beat Yak. So they've they've set the bar even higher. They're aiming for 2018. So in just three years, they're going to be they're going to be 100% um, renewable energy powered. And taking a, a more of a local look at things. Um, down in Sea Spray, where there's a community that was, you know, the first, or if not one of the first, to declare themselves gas field free. Um, you know, they've connected with me, and we're having conversations about what are the local community-owned renewable energy options down there. And some of the, the things that have popped up are, you know, the, the community-owned wind. It is a coastal site. It's very windy. It's got a rich resource. Um, so over time, we're, we're starting. You know, we're seeing communities taking control over their own energy future, and, and having a self-determination about what their energy sources look like. And I'm a I'm a an appreciator of beer, mm -hmm. and the brewery down here. You know, you guys are already leading the way. Um, the 96 kilowatt um, solar installation on the Grand Ridge Brewery is just a fantastic example of the type of renewable energy generation that you can have operating locally. Taking a step back, a bit of a broader look at things, there's a race between the states of Australia. So we've got the ACT, they've set a target of 90% renewable energy by 2020. South Australia, 50% renewables by 2025. Queensland, 50% renewables by 2030. And in Victoria at the moment, under the Daniel Andrews government, we've got a commitment for two renewable energy targets with a baseline target of at least 20% by 2020. So 
there is a, an emerging consensus when it comes to the future of our energy system, and it's all about renewable energy. People aren't setting coal energy targets. Um, and taking a step back once again, internationally we see that choice between pollution and fossil fuels or clean renewable energy occurring. And you know, our neighbours, New Zealand, they're on track to retire their last coal power plant by 2018. Um, the United States has retired 200 coal power plants since 2010. And they're set to retire hundreds more under President Obama's new regulations on coal pollution. And finally, in the developed world, China and India, we are seeing efforts to ramp up renewables. Um, coal demand in China has fallen for 12 years in a row. Um, and if you're going to be talking about mining coal um, for export, you need a customer. And globally, we're seeing that the, the customer base for this product is shrinking. So I'll leave it right there. Keep it nice and short. We can go to, um, go to question time. But thanks for having me. Lee, you make friends with you.